Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God bless you, everybody. We thank God for this opportunity to share with you the word of God. Amen. We are here at Agape Worldwide Ministries. This is our um, Agape Loves Bible class. This is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. The Lord has blessed us to, amen, see another day. And despite what's going on in the world today and maybe even in our lives, amen, we still going to give God glory, honor, and praise. And it's so important for the believers in Christ Jesus, no matter what you're going through, it, give God praise, honor, and glory. I'll let nothing separate us. Uh, separate us from the love of God. So it's so important for us as believers to hold on to your faith, to hold on to hold the old folk you sing your song, hold to his hands. Amen. God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. So today we are in the book of Leviticus, but before we get into our book, we're going to read our books of the Bible starting from Genesis all the way down through Revelations. Amen. So let us begin. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, Ruth, 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, 1 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, Esther, Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1 Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, Philemon, Hebrews, James, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, Jude, Revelation. Amen. We thank God for the word of God. Jesus said, Behold, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. Hallelujah. So we thank God for Amen. The word of God and the word of truth. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And again, we are uh, going through the entire Bible. And we are grateful for those of you that are taking the journey with us through the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And if God is in the volume of the book, we are blessed. Amen. By um, uh, traveling this book, traveling the word of God. We get to learn more about God as much as we learn about his word. We learn more about who he is. He said, in the beginning was the word. The word was with God in James 1. And the word was God. So the more you study and know God's word, the more we know about God and who God is. Hallelujah. And so it's so important for us to study the word of God. Okay, we're in the book of Leviticus. We're in the 14th chapter. Uh, we In the 13th chapter last week, we learned... Amen. What the symptoms were to leprosy and what to look for, the diagnosis of, of leprosy, hallelujah, and uh, what to look for. Uh, and, and, and now we're in the 14th chapter, uh, the ceremonial cleansing. Uh, now it's time to, once we find someone that has leprosy uh, or a home that has leprosy, uh, this is what to do. Amen. I'm trying not to talk too much because this is a lengthy chapter. Amen. It's almost 60 verses. Amen. Like I said, I'm not rushing through, though, because uh, God's word is so important that we shouldn't uh, gloss over anything. Uh, but if you have any questions, you can speak at any time. Um, but we're going to save the comments for the end. 
um, so we can get through the chapter. All right. And I'll try to do the same. But if I see something that I think you might want to know the definition of or you want some clarity on, I'll jump in. And at the end, if there's still something you don't quite understand, uh, no guarantee that I understand it. But we can look it up together and um, try to get some understanding on what was done. Again, as I always said, what came first, scripture or oral tradition? And we must understand that uh, oral tradition came before scripture. Before anybody wrote it down, uh, the stories and the word of God was passed down from, from generation to generation. And so we need to understand that first. Before we had a book to read, before we had scriptures to read, the story was told as to what the script, what the Bible, what God had dealt with his people in the children of Israel. So we need to understand that oral tradition came before scripture. And so we can't so lock so hard in on the scripture that we miss um, the, the substance of what God was doing and what he was saying to his people. Okay, so with that in mind, let's let's dive into chapter 14. And I took too long on that, but it's okay anyhow. Chapter 14, uh, Leviticus. Chapter 14. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, this shall be the law of the leper in the day of his cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look, and behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper, then shall the priest command to take for him that is to be cleansed to birds alive and clean, and cedar wood, and scarlet and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water, as for the living bird, he shall take it, and the cedar wood, and the scarlet, and the hyssop, and shall dip them and the living bird in the blood of the bird that was killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleansed from the leprosy seven times, and shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird loose into the open field. Okay, now this is someone who, amen, this is ceremonial cleansing. This is someone who's already been designated clean already so they are already clean but this is a ceremony cleansing um, that's done by the priest again they had to come before the priest uh, with any ailment or sickness or disease uh, we're talking about a theocracy in, in other words the church governed the, the nation the people you hear people talk about on the news today oh the church wants a theocracy they in the uh, islam they want a theocracy the jews want a theocracy and a theocracy means that the church is in charge of the government in charge like in iran you heard you saw the atolia khomeini he he talked about the deal to the people because he's the leader of that of, of iran the president is just a figurehead uh in iran uh, so he's not really he don't have any power he really don't have any authority uh, he's just he's just there to do well whoever the Khomeini or who's ever uh, in charge of the church of Iran and so uh, they're in charge it's like Vatican City uh, the Pope is in charge of the of the city and it, it, it in charge of the nation of the Catholic Church uh, there is no governing body over those those churches so it's a theocracy uh, the church is in charge uh, so in this particular case, the children of Israel had to go to the priest uh, for for uh, cleansing and had to be deemed clean and to dwell among the people by the priest. And if not by the priest, no one else could step in. There's no governing bodies. There's no governors, no king, no, no president, nothing. Uh, if the priest designated you unclean, there was no higher authority you could go to because the priests were the highest authority. And he that is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes, and shave off all his hair, and wash himself in water, that he may be clean. And after that he shall come into the camp, and shall tarry abroad out of his tent seven days. But it shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave all his hair off his head, and his beard, and his eyebrows, even all his hair he shall shave off. And he shall wash his clothes, also he shall wash his flesh in water, and he shall be clean. And on the eighth day he shall take two he lambs without blemish, and one ewe lamb of the first year without blemish, and three tenth deals of fine flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil, and one log of oil, 
And the priest that maketh him clean shall present the man that is to be made clean, and those things before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the priest shall take one he lamb, and offer him for a trespass offering, and the log of oil, and wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And he shall slay the lamb in the place where he shall kill the sin offering and the burnt offering in the holy place. For as the sin offering is the priest's, so is the trespass offering, it is most holy. There has to be an offering to the Lord for sin. There has to be an offering to the Lord, amen, to cover the, the, the sin of the person and to cover the disease. And God God required that something die, amen, the, the blood, the shed of the blood, to cover the sin, to atone uh, for, the, for the sin and to cleanse the person from sin. All right, we at the 14th verse. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering, and the priest shall put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. And the priest shall take some of the log of oil, and pour it into the palm of his own left hand. And the priest shall dip his right finger in the oil that is in his left hand, and shall sprinkle of the oil with his finger seven times before the Lord. And of the rest of the oil that is in his hand shall the priest put upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot, upon the blood of the trespass offering. And the remnant of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall pour upon the head of him that is to be cleansed. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord. And the priest shall offer the sin offering, and make an atonement for him that is to be cleansed from his uncleanness, and afterward he shall kill the burnt offering. And the priest shall offer the burnt offering and the meat offering upon the altar, and the priest shall make an atonement for him, and he shall be clean. He shall be clean. It's okay for him to go back into uh, societies, back back into um, um, with with everyone else. Amen. He's going to be clean after after he has been designated clean by the priest. Amen. So that's that's for the rich. Now that's for that they that had the money to do these things. Sometimes you know these different people didn't have. Um, like I was telling you last week, the lamb cost a certain amount. The the turtle dove. Uh, I had to go back to those notes. Uh, they had different prices and they cost different things. And so a bird, a pigeon, you know that's not going to cost uh, as much. You, know, you can get a whole chicken. You can do that today. Chicken is less than beef. You know, so uh, it was the same back in those days as well. So. Uh, when they when they said a bullock a bullock was a far higher price than a pigeon, and so and when they was poor they they had other options. Okay, so those of you that have your phone uh, and you have a lot of noise in your background, please put your phone on mute so that we don't hear the background noise behind you. Please, thank you. Uh, if you can put your phone on mute so we don't hear the background noise. Amen. In Jesus' name. Uh, we at verse 21 talking about ceremonial cleansing from leprosy and this time is dealing with the poor and if he be poor and cannot get so much then he shall take one lamb for a trespass offering to be waved to make an atonement for him and one tenth deal of fine flour mingled with oil for a meat offering and a log of oil and two turtle doves or two young pigeons such as he is able to get and the one shall be a sin offering, and the other a burnt offering. And he shall bring them on the eighth day for his cleansing unto the priest, unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, before the Lord. And the priest shall take the lamb of the trespass offering, and the log of oil, and the priest shall wave them for a wave offering before the Lord. And he shall kill the lamb of the trespass offering, and the priest shall take some of the blood of the trespass offering, and put it upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot. Okay, again, the right ear to hear from God, the right hand in your work, the work of your hands, your labor, amen, and your right toe, your walk, your path. So God will be with you, and you, you hear from God, you work with God, you walk in God. And the priest shall pour of the oil into the palm of his own left hand. And the priest shall sprinkle with his right finger some of the oil that is in his left hand seven times before the Lord. 
And the priest shall put of the oil that is in his hand upon the tip of the right ear of him that is to be cleansed, and upon the thumb of his right hand, and upon the great toe of his right foot, upon the place of the blood of the trespass offering. And the rest of the oil that is in the priest's hand he shall put upon the head of him that is to be cleansed, to make an atonement for him before the Lord. And he shall offer the one of the turtle doves, or of the young pigeons, such as he can get, even such as he is able to get, the one for a sin offering, and the one for a burnt offering, with the meat offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for him that is to be cleansed before the Lord. This is the law of him in whom is the plague of leprosy, whose hand is not able to get that which pertaineth to his cleansing. Amen. So he had, uh, you know, you go to the CVS today, they have generic, or you go to the pharmacy, amen, they have generic medication that you can use uh, if you can't afford the um, the, the primary res uh, medicine. So God had a, uh, a, a, a generic or uh, had he had the poor in mind. Uh, the poor get sick and need healing just like anybody else. So he provided for them a way that they can receive cleansing just like the rich. All right, now we go to the home. If someone's home has leprosy, amen, and the remedy for that. Uh, verse number verse number 33. Uh, please, please put your phone on mute so we don't hear the background noise, please. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, When ye be come into the land of Canaan, which I give to you for a possession, and I put the plague of leprosy in a house of the land of your possession, and he that owneth the house shall come and tell the priest, saying, It seemeth to me there is, as it were, a plague in the house. Then the priest shall command that they empty the house, before the priest go into it to see the plague, that all that is in the house be not made unclean. And afterward the priest shall go in to see the house. And he shall look on the plague, and behold, if the plague be in the walls of the house with hollow streaks, greenish or reddish, which in sight are lower than the wall, then the priest shall go out of the house to the door of the house and shut up the house seven days. Amen. Uh, the priest shall look, go in the house, check out the house, make sure he, he, uh, it, it doesn't have the plague or mold on in there. And if it's be, beyond the wall, that doesn't. It means if it's beyond the surface of the wall, if it's embedded deep into the wall. Uh, then we're going to get into what he has to do. But um, um, it, that's what the priest is to look for so that he may uh, get the house cleansed. And the priest shall come again the seventh day and shall look, and behold, if the plague be spread in the walls of the house, then the priest shall command that they take away the stones in which the plague is, and they shall cast them into an unclean place without the city. And he shall cause the house to be scraped within round about, and they shall pour out the dust that they scrape off without the city into an unclean place. And they shall take other stones and put them in the place of those stones, and he shall take other mortar and shall plaster the house. And if the plague come again and break out in the house after that he hath taken away the stones, and after he hath scraped the house, and after it is plastered, then the priest shall come and look, and behold, if the plague be spread in the house, it is a fretting leprosy in the house. It is unclean. Amen. Amen. So he has to determine whether it's clean in the house or unclean, and what's, what's going on in the house as far as uh, the plague and, and removal of the people and removal of the walls and and the scrape scrape the walls and throw away the the the, the plaster and and take the stones that are affected take them out throw them away and and replace them with clean stones just like you got to do the person they're going to do the building the exact same way and he shall break down the house the stones of it and the timber thereof and all the mortar of the house and he shall carry them forth out of the city into an unclean place. Moreover, he that goeth into the house all the while that it is shut up shall be unclean until the even. Amen. It's good to understand that unclean things go into an unclean place. If it's affected by the uncleanliness of the plague, then it's no longer uh, fit to be in uh, general society, public society. So it has to be removed and moved into an unclean place. 
Uh, thank God that we have grace, amen, that we, amen, he took our filthy souls and, and he washed them clean through the blood of Jesus Christ. And now, amen, we have, amen, a right to the tree of life. We have access uh, to God uh, through the blood of Jesus Christ. And we wasn't thrown away somewhere. And he that lieth in the house shall wash his clothes. And he that eateth in the house shall wash his clothes. And if the priest shall come in and look upon it, and behold, the plague hath not spread in the house after the house was plastered, then the priest shall pronounce the house clean, because the plague is healed. And he shall take to cleanse the house two birds, and cedar wood, and scarlet, and hyssop. And he shall kill the one of the birds in an earthen vessel over running water. And he shall take the cedar wood, and the hyssop, and the scarlet, and the living bird, and dip them into the blood of the slain bird, and in the running water, and sprinkle the house seven times. He shall cleanse the house with the blood of the bird, and with the running water, and with the living bird, and with the cedar wood, and with the hyssop, and with the scarlet. But he shall let go the living bird out of the city into the open fields, and make an atonement for the house, and it shall be clean. This is the law for all manner of plague of leprosy and skull, and for the leprosy of a garment and of a house, and for a rising, and for a scab, and for a bright spot, to teach when it is unclean, and when it is clean. This is the law of leprosy. Amen. This is the law of leprosy. This is what the priests ought to do in a home that has leprosy. Amen. Or uh, with people, or the poor, or the rich. Uh, we read last week about how to look for it and now what to do about it comes, amen, and the procedures, amen, to be followed, every kind, serious uh, a leprosy or, or mildew or fungus or mold or whatever is in the house. Uh, and, and then he told you what color and uh, how, what to look for so you don't mix it up with just a common mold or a common uh, uh, a fungus. Amen. Want to make sure that you know that it's the plague. It's something that's highly contagious, um, and that can that could uh, uh, wipe out the whole camp, wipe out the whole nation. And so, and when you go into a new land, land that I promise you, you go into a house and make sure that they they say there's something here. Come check it out. Amen. Uh, you know what to look for. You know what to do. Amen. In that home. Amen. So we that so we know exactly how to uh, take care of the problem. The issue is. Uh, God could just wipe them clean, and and I was when I was reading this, I was thinking, well, you know, the Lord could just heal them uh, straightway, Amen. But He wants to use His men of God. He wants to use uh, the people of God, uh, so people can know that He's using them, Amen, as His divine access uh, to cleansing and healing, Amen. Hallelujah, and to to bring us back into that at one minute with Him, reconciliation. The, the people that are, have leprosy can get back with uh, the people, the other children of Israel. Just like no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, no matter what sins you have committed, uh, yeah, Amen. You have an advocate with the Father. You can get back with God. You can get cleansed. That's why I so I love about being a, a Christian, being a believer. Amen. Because of uh, repentance. Amen. Reconciliation. We can get back with God. Amen. We can repent of our sins. Hallelujah. Turn. Do an about face. And, and turn from our wicked ways. Amen. And then we can we can have what God, amen, wants for us to have in life. You don't have to stay where you are. You don't have to stay in the sins that you're in. You don't have to stay in the problem, in the situation that you're going through. God has prepared a way of escape. Amen. And you can be delivered and you can be set free. All you have to do is put your trust in him and everything will be all right. Amen. We went through 57 verses. That went that went pretty well. Kind of let him read a little bit today. Amen. Because it was so many verses. But if there's any questions about anything through this chapter uh, or any comments, you can make those at this time. Excuse me, can you say that again? Did anybody have a question or a comment? Amen. Uh, are there any prayer requests at this time?
Amen. I need prayer. I, I need much prayer. Pray for my situation. Pray for, for my home. Pray for uh, Marcy. Any other prayer requests? Thank you, Lord. Mother, if you would lead us off in prayer, and I'll, I'll close out if there are no other prayer requests. Amen at this time in Jesus' name. We just thank you for this Bible class. Lord, we thank you for the journey of your people, Lord God. We thank you for our journey, hallelujah, through the word of God as the children of Israel went through, hallelujah, the hallelujah, the wilderness to the promised land. God, you're taking us through this journey. And we're thanking God for, amen, the journey through your word and what to do in the case of leprosy. We might not have the same concerns, but we have, amen, the leprosy, the, the plague of sin. Amen. It's ever present in our lives. It's not only in our walls. It's in. A, it's in. It's around our homes and in our schools and in our communities. In our government, Lord. Hallelujah. It's all around us, God. Hallelujah. But I heard in your word you say, Lord, that I I, I I pray that you take them not out of the world. Hallelujah. But that you keep them from evil, God. Hallelujah. And that's the prayer of Jesus Christ, Lord God. And that's my prayer today. Lord God, that you keep us from evil, Lord God. Hallelujah. The, the Lord's prayer says, Lord God, hallelujah, deliver us from evil. Hallelujah. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. Hallelujah. Forever. And we just praise you. We magnify you. We lift you up. We know, amen, what the, what the people of God, the request that has been made, and the spoken request, and the unspoken, those that are sick and shut in, those that are dealing with uh, loss of loved ones, those that are having to move, and amen, those without home, those without jobs, Lord God, sickness and disease, hallelujah, Lord God, whatever it is, Lord God, you was wounded for our transgressions, you was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement, our peace are upon you, and with every stripe that you were hit with, Lord God, we are healed, and we speak healing, we speak deliverance, Lord God, we speak wholeness, we speak righteousness, Lord God, when the enemy come in like a flood, your word said that the spirit of Lord would lift up a standard against the enemy, and Lord God, we're not looking to the enemy, we're not looking to the flood, Lord God, we're looking for the standard. Hallelujah. God, we need your standard. We need your glory. We need your power. We need your anointing. Hallelujah. We need your presence, Lord God. We need your holy power, Lord God, to reign on us, Lord God. We need to
the Shekinah glory of God to rest upon your people, Lord God. Those, Lord God, their family members, Lord God, loved ones, and the ones that they care about, God, are going through serious things, serious problems, Lord God. Hallelujah. Plagues on every hand, Lord God. Situation, poverty, Lord God. Hallelujah. Somebody is under the poverty, I mean, the plague of poverty, Lord God. Lord God, hallelujah. Open up the window of heaven. Pour them out a blessing. They don't have room to receive. And God, when you bless them, helping them be good stewards uh, of your blessings, Lord God. Let them know, Lord God, that they got to, amen, give back into the storehouse, Lord God, that they got to make that statement of faith, amen, even with their finances, Lord God. Hallelujah. They got to make that statement of faith and, and make that commitment, that financial commitment to a church and to a ministry. Hallelujah, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, that you, amen, let them know, Lord God, that they got to, amen, see the covering, Lord God, that the pastor and the church is covering them, Lord God. Hallelujah. That they have to, amen, hallelujah, bless the house, amen, that's feeding them, Lord God. Hallelujah. And we ask that you touch and deliver, make a way out and open doors to seem closed. And bless the houses of God. Bless the men and women of God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Help us to stand on the wall and do a good work. Lord Jesus, Lord God, work while it's day. The night coming when no man can work. Bless, touch, and deliver right now. Help us all speak the same thing. And let there be no division among us. Let be perfectly joined together. Hallelujah. In the same mind and the same judgment. For God, you gave some pastors, some apostles, some, hallelujah, teachers, Lord God, evangelists and prophets, Lord God, for the perfecting of the saints, the work of the ministry, the edifying of the body of Christ. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, until we all come into the unit, until you come back and crack the sky. In other words, you said, take care of my people till I get back. Hallelujah. Look out for my children. Matter of fact, you ask Peter, Peter, you love me? Hallelujah. Feed my sheep. Hallelujah, Lord God. And we need to feed the sheep today. We need to lead in righteousness today. Bless us, Lord God. Help us to be the people of God you call for us to be in these last and evil days. Bless agape in our work, the work of our hands, the things that we need. Lord God, hallelujah, the things we're trying to do, the things we've already have done and are doing today, Lord God. And we bless you even in this Bible class today. Somebody hearing the word of God, not a leaflet, not a pamphlet. Somebody hearing the word of God today, not an article. They hearing the Bible tonight. Hallelujah, God. And we just thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus, that they're hearing your word. Hallelujah. In you we live, we move, we exist by your word. We have not because we ask that. And how we know to ask if we don't know what your words say. Hallelujah. So we just thank you for this ministry and the how we pray with folk and then what we do for the people of God in this community and in this world. Hallelujah. And the people all over the world. I'm getting phone calls from all over the world. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. In California, just got off the phone. Hallelujah. With a young lady from California, Lord God, we ask you to bless her. Uh, Sister Sister Noe, we ask you to bless her in the name of Jesus and the situation that's going on in her life. In the name of Jesus, Lord God, we ask you to bless, touch, and deliver. Make a way out of the way. Open doors that seemingly closed. Moving the lives for your people. Help us do what's right and what's pleasing in your sight. These and all blessings we ask in Jesus Christ's name I pray. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And amen. Amen. We thank God for you. Amen. And tune in every Wednesday night. 7 o'clock is our Bible class. Every Tuesday. Amen. Noonday prayer. Sunday morning worship. Amen. Auxiliary service. Sunday evening. 3 o'clock. Amen. You're certainly welcome to come out and worship with us here at Agape. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sunday evening. At, at four o'clock we're scheduled to be at community church amen down in triangle virginia amen if you can't make it out just pray for us as we go but if you want to go with us let me know amen you can inbox me or give me a call let me know that you want to go with the church down to triangle amen hallelujah down in uh triangle virginia grand park road community church amen sunday evening at four o'clock amen and we'll be right back here amen next wednesday night Amen. Giving God praise, honor, and glory for this is the day that the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. So we just thank God for you. Thank God for what he's doing in the lives of his people. Amen. And solicit your prayers and keep praying for the saints of God. Saints, the believers in Christ Jesus need to work together, lock arms and work together as a people of God. Hallelujah. No no fighting one another and, 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 and talking about one another. We should be building up one another in this most holy faith. The true believers need to stand together as a people of God in times like these. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Our closing scripture coming from the book of 1 Timothy 1, uh, first chapter, 17th verse. It reads, Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Let the church say, Amen. Hug somebody. Tell them that you love them. This is the Agape Way. God bless you. And God bless you too.